Hello and welcome back to the second part of the Push for Bitwig tutorial. First, let's start with a little addendum for the last uh, part of the series. Um, seems I forgot something. If you press the Shift key and the Quantize button, you come uh, into the Groove menu. So there you can enable uh, the Groove, disable it again, and also have your Shuffle setting and accentuation and so on. So this little addendum for the last show. Today, I would like to talk about um, how you play the push because the push is also designed as an instrument not only as a controller but also playing it also playing it live and therefore there are different modes and also sequences if you prefer to use sequences and today we'd like to look at these so there are two main modes the one is the note modes and the session mode so if you go to the session uh, maybe we go to a project which which contains some clips here. So you have your usual clips, starting, stopping, and so on. But if we go to note, this is a section for playing. And let's go back to the empty project. Here we are again. And in the empty project, I prepared a track with a drum part and a track with a bass part. And we want to examine now the different modes. So if I press note again, these are the options you have for playing or sequencing. So there is a play mode with your uh, notes and scales. There is a sequencer mode and there is a drum mode for playing drums and sequencing drums. And there is a very specific and experimental sequencer, which I call the raindrop sequencer, which we also will have a look later on. Let's start with the drums. So if I go into the drum mode, this is uh, also this exactly the same as you might know from using the push controller with Ableton Live with some specifics. For example, um, you can have the colors of your pads like you have in your in your Bitwig Studio. So if I go here, for example, and say I'd like to have the snares in this color, then also you will see that color um, uh, on your controller, so you can color code your instruments if you prefer that. And uh, yeah, as you might know, the, the highlighted one is, is, is painted in blue. And also if you're playing, uh, you will see uh, green notes lighting up. These are the field slots. So you see these slots are empty up there. In the uh, right uh, lower corner, you see the length of your um, of your bar. So we only have one bar and you can also change this here. But first we need to create a clip. Let's go to fix length. Let's say we want to have a two bar clip and new. And that's something be, um, let's here have the clips. It's something to be aware of. There is a little problem that you can't set the focus. So you need to ensure that the clip is in focus. If you once have one in focus, then it's normally working. But at the first, first startup, it might not be automatically focused. So if nothing's happening there, check that. So now it's already created a two bar clip. and it's looping happily and it's ready to override. So you can play into the, the clip. Let's turn on the metronome. Something like this, have a little groove going and you can keep it playing. You can just disable override mode, press shift and record turn off the metronome and if you want to quantize as I said in the last tutorial you need to be aware that the focus is here and then also quantize is working and you can always uh, again uh, enable overdub shift and record and can add some stuff to it Yeah, and that's it. And you also see now um, the single notes up there, so you can also always edit them on your grid. 
if we select the bass drum, we should turn off that here first. That selection does not record. And then you can see you can see your snare, can can change the snares here. Let's add something funny. Yeah, and if the clip is longer, then can be put here into the display. You can scroll to right and scroll to left. This one still fits. If it would be longer, it would be three bars or four bars, then the additional notes would appear here. And this is also depending on what your resolution is. So currently we have a 16th resolution. So if you go to a very high 32, it's moving much faster. And now it does not fit here on one page. So you can scroll to the next one. And scroll back again. And then you can also, yeah, you can say you want to have eight fourth or also the triplets everything is working here as expected and as i said now here you see also uh, the number of the bars um, so you could now for example change that to only play one bar or if you want to have again two bars press the first one and then keep it pressed and press the second one and so you know if your two bar loop again and you can also now enlarge it press the first and press the fourth and now we have a four bar clip going on. And you can use that for improvisation. For example, you could have a break on the third one and then enable just the break and so on. So it's pretty nice for improvisation and also live improvisation. Let's go back to our two bar loop. Yeah, these are the main features of the drum track. Um, you can also scroll up and down in, in your uh, drums. Maybe let's have a look at the drum instrument and you can see that, that it's also moving here. So if I go up, it moves up here to the next one. And if you go octave down, it moves down here as well. So you can also see these if we have more than just here 12 instruments like here. Uh, what else can we do? What you can do is uh, you can also solo. So if you keep the solo button pressed, you can solo an instrument, for example, the bass drum here. Turn solo off again. And also mute is working. So you can mute specific ones. Back to only bass and snare and enable them again. Also nice for improvisation. Also the delete button is working. So if you keep the delete button pressed and the pad you push then all those notes or those pads gets deleted. So let's remove the snares. So all the snares are gone. Ah, and there's one, uh, two more features um, we should mention. The one is if you don't, uh, if you select the pad, it's, it's playing. So if you don't want to have it uh, sound, keep the select button pressed and the select the pad then it's not sounding and what that also does um, this is a new side effect i implemented if you select it with the select button pressed also the channel gets selected up there so this is pretty nice for adding in your specific uh, sound to have on a drum pad but we will talk about this later on when we talk about device editing we're already running 10 minutes now, so I think we leave it with that one, with the drum mode for, for, for today. And next time we look at the note sequences and note playing. Goodbye and make some music.